Hi there, welcome to City Online. What a great show we have, and it's because you're participating as well. And I've got the burning question. <laughs> How about that referendum question? Do you understand it? And, uh, you know, let's uh, talk about that. And it has a lot to tell us about how the campaign is uh, is rolling along so far. And Steve Withers is here with us as well from Vote for MMP. Gentlemen, good to see you. What is Vote for MMP? Uh, well, the referendum legislation uh, requires that uh, campaigns who plan to pay for advertising uh, register themselves and have a name. So Vote for MMP is the vehicle, if you like, for Fair Vote Canada which is the national ongoing permanent organization promoting electoral reform across Canada. All right, and Richard, how are things going so far? You know, we talk about electoral reform, we talk about, obviously, the, the democratic right to vote. We've got the election on the 10th and a lot of big headlines emerging so far. What are you making of what you're seeing? Well, there are two, there are two sort of big stories that are emerging from this election campaign, which has really been going on since April, since the yeah. Premier prorogued the House back then. Now, this is the first time we're having fixed election dates. So we've been watching political parties form and frame their own strategy throughout the last few months. The two big stories, the number one is faith-based schools, which the Liberals are trying to use as a wedge issue against the Conservatives. As you know, the Conservatives want to fund all religious schools, just like what we do with the Catholic system. That has drawn some criticism, but that has also drawn some praise for the Conservatives. On number two, both the Conservatives and the New Democrats are hammering away at Dalton McGuinty's broken promises. You'll Gentlemen, how about that referendum question? You know, the average Joe, and I, I'm certainly that, it's a tough one to wrap your head around. Well, mixed member proportional representation is a, is a mouthful for any of us to say. Uh, it sounds kind of complicated, but uh, you'll do a better job, Steve, at explaining it. It essentially is, it's, it would be a North American first if Ontario passes this referendum, uh, but there's a lot to get your head around. And if you don't understand the question, it's pretty tough to give it a, a true and honest uh, answer. Well, yeah, and, and there's a very good reason uh, that people aren't understanding the question. It's because they don't know why they're being asked it. Uh, the whole problem is that the Citizens' Assembly went through a seven-month process, looked at all the evidence, examined all these issues that have been raised in the course of the debate, uh, and made a decision 94 to 8 in favor of recommending mixed-member proportional. Let now, me ask you this, The then, problem they've got... What's in it for me as a, t as a voter? If I say yes, what, what does it give me in clear and simple language? And if I say no, what does that mean? Oh, well, all right. Well, just if I can finish that first little bit, um, they made a recommendation supported by a set of reasons and uh, we were promised that in the referendum we'd be full campaign we'd be fully informed well how can you be fully informed about the question if you don't know why they recommended so it so you're happy so there's a the question but you just aren't happy with the question no an elections right? ontario was given the job of telling you what when where but they weren't given the job of telling you why so when people look at the question they go why it's the, the why is not there so that's the, i guess that's the job we're trying to fill now as far as what mmp does for you it gives you a vote that counts when you go along, you get two votes, one for a local candidate and one for the party you think would be best for government. And whoever wins your local election, because that's first past the post, right, and most votes don't elect anybody in that situation, under MMP, you still have a vote that counts. Provided the party gets 3%, you will elect people. And uh, that's a revolution of mind. That's the first time in Ontario people have actually had a vote that they know will count. And of course the criticism on MMP is that, that you will obviously end up with more politicians. There's 103 mm -hmm. seats going into this election. It would have 129. And the critics are saying more salaries, you can address more, this. Uh, There's just more politicians. The people want more politicians. They are all, they're also saying that some of these MPPs that we will elect, that we will vote for, some will be elected, but depending on the results of the percentage of the vote, some will be appointed. Uh, and that loses the accountability factor for well, you I, vote I, for I don't. I object to the word. But I'm, I'm going to I'm going to take this to a different level. You know, you you complicate a, a a vote with a referendum question like this, and it's a complicated question. Does it turn people away from voting at all? This is an issue we deal with at every level of politics, getting people into into the voting booth. And Steve, I think you, you and I will agree on this: is that when you have a referendum question that seems a little convoluted, a little complicated, some people will just won't mark the X on it, and they'll toss this opportunity away to, to before they even understand what the question. We have to take a break. I know, I'm sorry. Let me, uh, we've got to pay some bills. So we'll be right back with more response. And we're going to get to the phones. I promise you. <laughs> I'm making that promise. We'll be right back.